We've already learned how to simplify thirds, and when we were learning to simplify thirds, we snuck in how to multiply thirds. We just didn't really talk about it. So the basic rule is if you have two thirds multiplied by each other, root a times root b, the answer is going to be root a times b, or just a b. Now we can go sort of one step further with this rule, I guess. If you had c root a times d root b, the answer would be the bits outside of the thirds multiplied by each other, c, d, and then the bits inside the thirds multiplied by each other, a, b. These two rules are going to get us through any kind of multiplication when it comes to thirds. So here we have root 2 times root 12. We just multiply the bits underneath the thirds by each other. We get root 2 times 12, which is root 24. And don't forget to simplify it. That's the same as uh, 4 times 6. So we get 2 root 6. So the multiplying bit's the easy bit, and then we simplify. So a second example here, 4 root 3 times 5 root 7. We multiply the bits outside, so we get 4 times 5, root 3 times 7, which is going to be 4 times 5, which is 20, root 21. And then you really need to ask yourself, does 21, can that be simplified? I don't think it can. 20 root 20. Now what about this one, root 3 squared? Well, squared just means times by itself. So this is still multiplication, root 3 times root 3. So it would be root 3 times root 3, which is root 3 times 3, which is root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Now I really didn't have to go through all of this, right? The square root of 3 is the number that when multiplied by itself gives the number 3. So we have a nice little like rule for this. If we're squaring a square root, we're just going to get the thing under the square root as our answer. Root a squared equals a. Done. A bit similar to the previous example, 3 root 5 squared. Now, here we're squaring this number and we're squaring this number. So 3 squared is 9 and root 5 squared is 5. So we get 9 times 5 which is 45. Square that, square that, done. So now that brings us to our distributive law, expanding brackets. Now, these are just numbers, so they're going to behave the same way that you've expanded brackets in the past. 2 root 3 times 4 minus root 3. We're going to have to multiply this by this, and this by this. So, 2 root 3 times 4, that's just a whole number, no third there. So it's going to be 2 times the 4, and then that root 3. And then this one is going to be 2 root 3 times minus root 3. We can imagine that there's a minus 1 there. So it's going to be 2 times negative 1. Um, let's do 1, negative 1 times 2. And then it's going to be root 3 times root 3, which we know is 3. All right, 2 times 4 is 8. We get 8 root 3 minus 1 times 2 times 3, minus 6. Our answer is 8 root 3 minus 6. We can't go any further here, we can't simplify that, we can't group those together. So, set of double brackets here, 3 plus root 2 times 2 root 3 minus 4. Foil method here. So, first, so 3 times 2 root 3. Now we can speed up the process here, you don't have to show absolutely everything. 3 times 2 root 3, that's 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 root 3 is our answer there. Uh, outer, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Inner, let's do it that way. Root 2 times 2 root 3, that's going to be 2 root 6, because the 2 times the 3 here is going to be 6. And then uh, last, so root 2 times negative 4, negative 4 root 2. And then we check to see if we can simplify it. Uh, a root 2, a root 6, a root 3, and a whole number. No, we can't simplify it. That's the end of that. All right, so another double bracket here, but a special pattern. 2 root 3 minus 7, 2 root 3 plus 7. Some of you are looking at that, you already know what's going to happen. Some stuff's going to disappear. All right, so let's do it anyway. Uh, first, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3 is going to be 4 
But then that root 3 times root 3 is going to be a 3 as well. So 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, our first outer, all right, 2 times 7 is 14. 14 root 3. Inner, 2 times negative 7 and of root 3. That's going to be negative 14 root 3. So these are going to cancel each other out. That's the special pattern we've got going on here. And then we have negative 7 times positive 7 is negative 49. 12 minus 49, we get um, something, negative 37. This is a difference of two squares here, um, which is kind of handy when it comes to thirds because you can see those thirds fall out because you end up squaring some thirds and you end up with just a number. Now, of course, I have to show you this. 4 root 3 plus 5 all squared. Don't make the mistake here of squaring this and squaring this and calling it a day. That's not what it means. Remember that this is a set of two brackets. 4 root 3 plus 5 and 4 root 3 plus 5. And then you still have to apply your FOIL method to that. So 4 root 3, uh, let's do the first one. Uh, 16 times 3, 48. 4 root 3 times 5 is uh, 20 root 3. Uh, inner 20 root 3. That should be a 3. And then outer 25. And you can see one of these terms collapses and these terms will also come together as well. So 48 plus 25 is 73. And 20 root 3 plus 20 root 3 is 40 root 3. Covered quite a bit, multiplication, distributive law. So don't forget that everything that we've learned can be applied to the questions you already know and love, like find the area of this rectangle. So if we want to find the area of the rectangle, we're multiplying length by width. And that's going to lead us to uh, root 5 times this thing here. And you can see we're going to do some multiplication, distributive law, multiply this by this, multiply this by this. We get 2 root 5 times 6 is 30, and then root 5 times 3 is 3 root 5 centimetres squared. Um, can we do anything with the 30? No, we can't simplify that any further. That's the answer. All right, that's our multiplying thirds and the distributive law.